everybody how proud I am uh, to stand before my amazing students and see all the red, white, and blue you guys uh, put on today to represent an amazing assembly we have. So let's give each other a big round of applause for that. Okay, so in a minute, I'm going to be introducing you to somebody pretty awesome, okay? I just wanted to kind of kickstart uh, this morning's assembly off uh, by saying a couple of words. I really want you guys to listen to what I have to say, um, and then when Sergeant Travis Mills come out, he's going to give you guys a really good message, okay? Um, so listen up. When you wake up in the morning, do you guys ever just lay there and really think? And I mean, not think about, hey, what am I going to wear today, or I didn't do my homework, or who am I going to hang out with after school? Do you just really think about, hey, what am I going to do today? How lucky am I to wake up and, and live another day? How am I going to make a positive difference either in your own life, or how are you going to make a positive difference in somebody else's life? Hey, guys, I get it. We have challenges. Some of us have more challenges than the next person. But it's important, okay, to think, how can I overcome those challenges? Resiliency, courage, compassion, kindness, okay? Those are the things that help us overcome those challenges. So tomorrow when you wake up, I want you to think about what I'm telling you. I want you to think, hey, what can I do today to make a difference in my life or in somebody else's life? Can you guys do that for me? All right, and that, that could be as simple as saying thank you. It could be as simple as holding the door. Simple little things add up. And I know I have an amazing student body and an amazing staff, so I know I can count on you guys. On April 10, 2012, the United States Army Staff Sergeant Travis Mills of the 82nd Airborne was critically injured on his third tour duty in Afghanistan by an IED while on patrol, losing both portions of his legs and both arms. He is one of only five quadriplegic amputees from the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan to survive these injuries. You want to talk about overcoming a challenge? Ladies and gentlemen of Sanford Junior High, let's give a warm welcome to this true American hero, Sergeant Travis Mills. Noah, can you come on up? I am proud to announce that our student body um, together raised $500 that we'd like to donate to the Travis Mills Foundation. Um, so we've got that check for you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think, uh, this isn't on yet, I don't think. And to kickstart, uh, one more thing. We have the Sanford Junior High Chorus. Um, let's all stand and honor our country with the national anthem.
you know. Just, uh, yes, you know. All right. Oh. Okay. Sorry. All right. Hey, great job, choir. Great job. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Is that the kind of morning I'm going to have to have? Really? That's a lot better. It's a lot better. Check it out. My name is Travis Mills, okay? I'm, uh, I'm actually from Michigan, but I live in Maine. I'm, I live up by Augusta area. It's, it's very true. I did lose, I lost uh, both arms and both legs. I work with Iron Man, and I fly around to save people all the time with him. It's a joke, guys. I don't really <laughs> work with Iron Man. All right, we're, uh, we're just kind of waiting for the PowerPoint to get set up, so... We're gonna have a little bit of fun. I, I um, where'd Jasmine go? She wanted to sing Frozen with me. Let it go. Jasmine. Come on, we're gonna. Right. All right. So you start us off. Start us off with, with Frozen. I'm just kidding. Go sit down. You're good. Give a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. All right. All right. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, why I'm here is I'm here to tell you guys about my story, about what happened to me. As you can tell, something must have happened because I literally have no arms and legs. So we're going to get into that and talk about motivation. We're going to talk about goal setting. And we're going to talk about uh, healthcare technology, how this stuff works. I mean, I literally can spin my hand around in a circle. So, and it doesn't even hurt. I can tell some of you are like, boy, that's got to hurt. Nope, it doesn't. And, uh, and we're going to get into that. So as soon as it's hooked up, it's getting real awkward, but don't worry, not for me. It's for them getting awkward. Everybody's staring at you. Oh, we know. No, no, everybody's like, what's going on? Like, why is this not working? Wondering, watching you. No. Anybody got any good jokes? Why'd the cow cross the road? to get to the other side, <laughs> right? I will tell you right now, if you tell a joke that's inappropriate, I cannot save you from the teachers. So if your hands are up and you're like, you know what, oh, that one went down. So did that one, so did that one. Ooh, should I say it? Uh, trying to think what I can and can't say to really positively affect you guys. Is I, want, I want to just help you guys do awesome things. So that's what I'm here for. Is anybody play sports? Show of hands, who plays football? Who plays basketball? Is field hockey a thing here? Nice, field hockey? Soccer, is that soccer? Does anybody play frozen soccer? Hockey, isn't that what they call it? Is everybody, hey, real quick, on a serious note, is everybody excited for the Broncos? Huh? Yeah. What? Wait, wait, wait. Wait, you guys, Peyton's going to win the Super Bowl this year, isn't he? What? Wait, you guys, you guys think... You guys think it's going to be Cam Newton or, or Carson Palmer? Who's going to win? Oh, wait a second. You guys are probably Tom Brady fans, huh? Yeah, he's pretty good. He's pretty good. Um, <laughs> all right, let's get started, shall we? Ladies and gentlemen, if anybody yawns, you will be up here with me presenting to your own uh, student body. If you're on your cell phones, you'll be up here with me presenting. And if you guys cannot stop talking to your person next to you, I'm going to bring you right up on here and we'll talk about it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Just kidding. All right, let's go. All right, like I said, Travis Mills, check this out. That's me. You, you guys probably can't see that, but no. Mm. Should we shift or you guys want to just... Don't worry about it, it's not that great. It's awesome. All right, so check it out. This right here is a picture that you see on the screen of my wife and me and my daughter. As you can tell, I had arms and legs. My daughter was about two months, three months old at the time, and this was right before Christmas, we were taking pictures. And um, you know, I just 
lived a pretty normal life. I was a staff sergeant in the 82nd Airborne Division. And all that means to you guys is I used to get paid by the Army to jump out of airplanes. Yeah, that was my job. I jumped out of airplanes and went overseas and, uh, you know, went against the Taliban. So it was pretty cool. But let's back it up. Let me tell you where I'm from. Maybe you guys can relate. I'm from a small little town of Vassar, Michigan. All right, 2,500 people, two stoplights, not big at all. And your town here is way bigger than my town back home, where I'm from. Right there in the top left picture is my mom and dad's favorite day in their whole entire life. It's my birthday, April 14th, my mom and dad's favorite day. I'm their favorite child. Is anybody here the middle child? You guys don't know it right now, but I'm going to tell you, you're the favorites. Let me explain that. Your mom and dad had the first kid. Who's the firstborn kid? Now, out of you guys that are firstborn, who has a little brother or a little sister? Okay, you see what happened? Your mom and dad had you and thought, oh, let's try this again. <laughs> and then they had the middle child, right? Is anybody here the youngest? Yeah, see, after the middle child comes the youngest. My mom and dad had the, my sister, and all of a sudden, they're like, we need to have another one. They had me, as you can tell, perfection. And then my little brother came along, and I said, whoa. Let's cut this off right here. We'll keep the middle one as our favorite, you know, and just love him the most out of everything. They won't admit that in public. That's probably not even true, but don't tell them I said that. But anyway, so I'm the middle child of uh, my family. I played a lot of sports growing up, football, baseball, basketball, wrestling, powerlifting, track, you name it, I did it. Um, I just want to live in the past real quick and show you guys how cool I was. Look at that. See, when you get old, you miss things like this. You guys don't know about it yet, but one day you're going to be like me. Telling everybody how awesome you used to be. Click it. I played football. Uh, I was number five. I played linebacker. And I also played uh, running back. So as you can see, I run touchdowns. I have blazing speed. And I'm awesome. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. All right. Yes. That's what I wanted. I needed that. I needed that today. Please don't spit spit wads at me. That's all I ask. Up there in a leather jacket. You look like you might spit a spit wad, but I love your jacket. I love that coat. <laughs> Dude's nailing it. Kid's nailing it. All right, slow up. All right, so anyways, I went to college for a little bit, and then I, uh, I decided I had to pay back some student loans, so I joined the military. I joined the military in uh, March of 2006. I went on my first deployment in 2007 for 15 months. That's a year and three months I was overseas. I didn't get to come back home but one time. I ended up meeting my wife on my R&R &R when I got to come back in December. We hung out and we had a great time. As you can tell, I was six foot three, 250 pounds of sheer pure awesomeness. I lifted weights. And you guys wouldn't know it, but the guys next to me are actually normal sized gentlemen. I was just a giant. I got married shortly after to my uh, beautiful bride, Kelsey. And, what's, yep, to Kelsey. And then, go ahead and click it. Then I went on another deployment. You see on my second deployment, a little bit different than my first one. The first one I got to lift weights every day, eat a hot meal, and uh, just go out into government work and come back onto the FOB, or the Ford Operating Base, the secure location. My second deployment was different. We were pushed out in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by every, you know, Taliban and everything in a little compound, no bigger than this gym, actually half the size of this gym. And I only took four showers in one year, which is a regiment I still keep. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. I showered like two weeks ago. Don't worry about it. <laughs> no, I showered this morning. Whatever. All right. So then I was there. You can see we're pretty dirty, whatever, on top of mountains, living like, like kings. Um, when you're over in Afghanistan, things kind of slip. Like, I was on top of a mountain for my first 50 days, and I had nothing that we got to do, like no showering, nothing. Just sit on top of a mountain and watch it pass, drop, watch it, you know, convoys go back and forth. And I'll tell you what. It gets pretty trying, and you're dirty, and you're disgusting, and you don't want to do anything. And I was, I'll tell you what, the highlight of my day, vegetable cracker, jalapeno cheese. Oh, it is amazing. And one day, on day 47, we had no idea when we were going back, I ended up dropping it accidentally on goat pellets. Yeah. You know what happened that day? <laughs> Afghanistan did not beat me, ladies and gentlemen. I picked that back up, I blew it off, and I ate it. Yeah. That's right. Sometimes, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. You can't let Afghanistan get you down. But anyways, all right, my wife and I bought a house. I came back. No, go back, go back. 
I came back from Afghanistan, my wife and I bought a house, and we were fortunate to have a baby. And when we had a little girl uh, named Chloe, and uh, she's my best friend, and then it came time for me to deploy again. And I thought, you know, I really don't you know, uh, want to leave my guys. I had orders taking me somewhere else. I was supposed to get restationed in Texas, and I didn't want to go. I wanted to deploy. So we're going to go back. Did you start all over again? Or no, we're good. All right, so then uh, I had to deploy again. So then I left um, in February of 2012. And ladies and gentlemen, on April 10th, I was uh, on patrol. We got a call that came in that said, well, hold on, we're going to keep, look at that, so good looking. Uh, so we had a call come in on April 10th that you know might be some uh, improvised explosive devices in the ground. We went out, we swept the area, we searched it, everything was said to be clear. I took my backpack off, it was about 80 pounds, and I dropped it. When it hit the ground, the earth beneath me blew up. It was an improvised explosive device, a roadside bomb that you guys have probably heard about. My, day, my life changed forever on that day. Within a matter of seconds, I would hit the ground on my left side of my face, I, and I rolled over. My left eye started swelling shut. I looked at myself, and I saw my right arm was gone at the bicep. My right leg was gone at the knee. My left leg was gone to the – well, I had muscle, tendons, and skin holding it, so it was just kind of belt, uh, bent over. My left hand was still there, wrist blown out pretty good, and my pinky and ring finger gone. First thing I did was uh, I rolled over, I saw what happened to me, I hit my mic and I said, hey six, this is four. I called my lieutenant and said, hey, LT, I just got hit by a bomb. I'm gonna need your medic over here to help me out with this damage for my guys. My medic came running up to me and he started to work on me. I said, hey, don't worry about it, doc. Seriously, you're not gonna save me. I've had a lot of guys that are friends of mine that didn't make it home, so don't worry about it. Just, you know, go, go save them and, and I appreciate you. He said, no, let me do my job and kind of yelled at me. My platoon sergeant and him, went ahead and put tourniquets on. You know, anyone know what a tourniquet is? All right, I'm gonna explain it for you guys if you don't. A tourniquet, basically, it's like you take, if you take your belt, if you get a bad bleed, you take your belt and you put it on your leg and you pinch it so tight that the artery shuts off, that's a tourniquet. It's kind of like a faucet, how you turn a faucet on and off. It just tries to shut the bleeding off so that it won't keep going out of your body because you want to keep blood in. That's, that's about the most basic I can put it, I guess. But uh, in that instance, I mean, I lost both arms and le or both legs and an arm, and the other one was still there. They duct taped my, my leg together because they had to cut the rest of it off, and I made it to the helicopter. On the helicopter, I you know, started talking to my guys that were hurt with me, telling them, hey, you're going to be fine, you're okay. Um, we made it to the operating table. When I got to the operating table, I kept trying to fight them off. My left eye is swollen shut. I can barely see, and I was telling them, leave me alone, save my, you know, leave me alone. I gave it back to my guys. I'm trying to sit up, and they're like, I don't know how you're still awake, Sergeant Mills. We need to go to sleep. So they knocked me out on April 10th. While they prepped me for surgery, they had to get me undressed. When they took my pants off, my left leg came with it. So I became a triple amputee right then and there on the operating table. Two days later, I was in Bagram, Afghanistan. I was still uh, unconscious from the medication, and they cut my left hand off because the skin around my wrist started to die, and they didn't want me to get any infections and work its way up my arm, so they had to cut it off. I came out of surgery. My brother-in-law was there, and he had no idea they were going to have to take it, and uh, I became a quadruple amputee on April 12th. On April 14th, which is my mom and dad's favorite day in the whole entire world, I woke up for the first time in Germany on my 25th birthday. So can you guys imagine on your birthday waking up, finding out that you've got, you, know, no, you have no arms and legs anymore? So uh, I woke up to find out I had no arms and legs. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I was pretty embarrassed. I was pretty down and out. I'll be honest. I mean, I was angry and embarrassed. That was, my, that was total emotions. My brother-in-law was there to talk to me. The first thing I said, my soldiers, how are my soldiers? I didn't really take into account what was going with me. I said, my soldiers, how are my soldiers? And he told me. And then I said, am I paralyzed? And he said, no. And I said, uh, Josh, I can take it. Like, I can't put my fingers or toes. You don't have to lie to me. And he said, no, you're not paralyzed, Travis, but you don't have them anymore. And then he explained what happened. So uh, this is a picture of me. I went from 250 pounds, six foot three, to no arms and legs and 140 pounds. I lost 110 pounds in a matter of four days. I made it back to the States on April 17th to Walter Reed National Medical Facility up in uh, Washington, D.C. area, or down in Washington, D.C. area, because we're in Maine, uh, get that right. Um, and I started my recovery. The first time my wife got to see me, it wasn't like those Hallmark movies that your mom and dad watch. You guys don't watch that stuff, but your, mom's probably, your mom and grandma probably do, and your dad. I know, I love them. Lifetime? Oh, jeez, don't get me started. Anyways, now, first thing I said to my wife is uh, sign the paper. She had to sign the paper to cut two more inches off my right leg because my stitches ripped open and I was bleeding out. So that's the first encounter I had with my wife. The next day, I told my wife, why don't you take everything we have and go? Take the house, take the money, take the cars. 
uh, take my daughter and go ahead and live your life and I'll financially support you because I didn't feel like I had much self-worth and I felt pretty down. My wife was pretty angry at me for that. She's like, that's not how this works at all. We're going to be here for you, her and my daughter. So I decided I had to just get better. So I'm here to talk to you guys today about is motivation, goals, short-term, long-term, how they affect me, how they can affect you. Talk about healthcare technology and talk about perspective, how I view my life, how I'm able to go around and tell jokes and have a good time and still live with this situation and not let it get me down or bother me. Let's get to motivation. Go ahead and click it. So in this picture right here, you'll see myself and my little girl. At the time, she was only six months old. When I was hit, she was six months old. Her name's Chloe. She's my best friend. Um, no offense to any of you guys here. I know you guys were hoping to make my list of best friends, but my daughter's got that, so it's okay. <laughs> Sorry. Horrible joke. Whatever. Uh, moving on. So my little girl sees me. I think she's going to think I'm scary. I mean, I got lines out of my neck. I got tubes running out of every... Uh, limb on my body, I got just stuff all over my chest. Nope. She thinks I'm just a fun play toy, her dad. She keeps squeezing my nose and giggling, trying to bite me. And then my wife is sitting there. Like I said, I told her to take everything we had and go. And she said, that's not ex at all how this is going to happen. And she was going to be there for me. So then I was motivated. All right, cool. You can sit around, have someone feed you, or you can just learn how to feed yourself and get back to being normal and get better. Go ahead and click it for me. So in walks Todd nicely. I come out of a, a medically induced coma, and in walks this guy, Todd nicely. And he's the second quadruple amputee. Turns out, ladies and gentlemen, I'm one of five. I'm the number four. So I'm not the first quadruple amputee. I'm not the last, uh, unfortunately. But other guys have been in my situation, and they've thrived. So he walks in. He's like, hey, what's up? My name's Todd. Uh, I'm a retired corporal from the Marine Corps. I'm a quadruple amputee like you. I live in Missouri, and you're going to get through this. Right there was my motivation. I knew I had to get better. So my doctor came in the room the next day and I said, look, I need to go work out. And he said, you're not ready. And I said, no, 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 you don't get it. I'm going to go work out. I'm like, I have to get better because I have a family. And we got in an argument and I called him every half hour for four hours straight so I can go do physical therapy for the first time. You know, you guys, ever, you guys do like, gym, like phys ed here, right? In gym, you're working out. You know what my workout was? I went down to occupational therapy lab, laid on my stomach, heating pad on my back, and I fell asleep. Best workout I've had in ages. I still work out, though. I do CrossFit. I want you guys to know that real quick. I still got it. Still got it. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. All right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's get to the goals, okay? What would my first goal be? Well, I wanted to be able to feed myself. I was tired of having people put food in my mouth for me, which, after you learn how to feed yourself, you get pretty upset because you're like, man, I really felt like a king when other people fed me, so... I tried going back. My wife said no. It's just a side note. No. All right. So I wanted to feed myself. So five weeks into my recovery, go ahead and click it, uh, I was able to go to my mom and dad's place. They were staying at Walter Reed on the campus there and feed myself. What this video does not show you is that I actually burned my mouth really bad because it was so hot. And I said, oh, my gosh, please hand me that milk. This is burning my throat. I just thought you guys wanted an insider's look, so I'm giving it to you. I'm here for you. Remember, the longer I'm here, the less you have to be in your classes today. Oh, stop it. Stop it. You have a wonderful school with wonderful teachers. Quit it. You're supposed to say, aww. Better. Better. All right, real quick, you guys will see this picture pop up. This picture is the last one ever taken of me. This is on April 9th. Last picture ever taken of me with arms and legs on. So that's what that is. That was right before we went on patrol that day. Um, as you can see, I'm awesome. So there's two things about me. One, I'm awesome, and two, I'm humble in that order. You guys, you guys get that? You get there. All right, go ahead and click it. All right, my next goal is I want to be able to walk. So at seven weeks, just under two months, just shy of two months, I was taking my first steps at Walter Reed. So I recovered enough, I healed enough to be able to put legs on and walk. I wasn't very tall. I went from six foot three to five foot five. Um, it was very painful. And uh, they said, you'll walk one lap. Well, what I decided was I was going to walk more than that. So I walked three laps that day. On the last lap, I told my therapist I was going to walk without crutches. And she said, Travis, you're not ready. It's your first day. Don't do it. So I got to the back straight away. <laughs> I picked the crutches up. And I started walking, and uh, she, in the video that we have, she says she keeps saying, put the crutches on the ground, put the crutches on the ground. And I keep walking, telling her, I'm 82nd Airborne, I'm as tough as they come, 
which is where the title of my book came as, Tough As They Come. You know, Tough As They Come is where that came from. And then I fell over, and she laughed. Yeah. So you guys should know that. Sometimes you should listen to people that are in charge of you. They're always right. And then, the next day, I found out that failure was going to be part of my success. I wasn't going to be successful every day. My dad came in for the first time because he, uh, he wasn't able to make it. He had some surgery that day. And he came in to watch me walk, and I was so jazzed up. I said, Dad, I'm going to walk five laps for you today. And I only walked half a lap, and I fell over. My muscles contracted so bad, I was so sore that I couldn't move anymore. So I found out that failure sometimes is part of success. It's not, you know, it, it wasn't lack of trying. You can never be afraid to try something just because you might fail. Because sometimes you're going to fail. But you, you got to get back up, dust yourself off, and keep going. And that's where my motto comes in. I tell people, never give up, never quit. Because I don't ever give up, and I don't never quit. And that's how I went about my recovery. And that's why they said I'll do the three years. And I was only there for 19 months because I just had to keep pushing forward. So just kind of remember that. I think I see a yawn in the top. Do you want to come help me out real quick? Oh, you know who you are. I see. Oh, oh, no. All right. All right. I wouldn't do that again. I'd pinch myself to wake up. I just, whatever. Moving on. Let's get to the fun stuff. All right. So my next long term, or my next short term goal is I want to be able to walk uh, a 5K. So I went to New York City. And I participated in a 5K. 5K is like 3.2 miles. I came through this tunnel and I wanted to quit. I wanted to sit down. I was tired. My legs were rubbed raw. I was bleeding in my socket. When I came out of the tunnel, there's 343 guys standing there with banners on their neck. And this is in New York City. Does anybody know what those banners represent? They have faces on them. See, on 9-11, there were 343 firefighters killed in the uh, Twin Towers. And those guys represent them. So when I got out of that tunnel, I wanted to sit down and quit. I thought, no way. These guys lost their life, you know, rescuing people on 9-11, I can keep moving and keep pushing forward. So I did, and I finished it, and then I tripped on stage in front of 20,000 people. So everybody laughed. It was horrible. Just take that all in real quick. Just kidding. No, I did trip on stage in front of 20,000 people. No one laughed, though. They felt really bad. But I told them it's okay. I got up. I've also broke my foot off before. My mom's like, what do I do? And I said, I just got to order a new one. Don't worry about it. I slipped. Snaps right off. All right, long-term goals. Sometimes you got to set goals that are uh, you know, not going to be something easily attained, something that you want to reach out and do. Like today, you might be sitting there thinking, boy, I really wish I'd get some pizza tonight. How am I going to put that plan in action? Is anybody else thinking that? Because that's what I was thinking. Like, I want pizza tonight. How am I going to? I love me some pizza. You guys like fans of jalapeno? All right, all right, all right, all right. I'm losing them, Craig. All right, all right. I'm losing the crowd. Oh, I gotta tell, I gotta say something funny, Craig. Oh, I gotta say something funny. Nope, got nothing. So, all right, long-term goals. I wanna be able to stand there tall and salute my guys when I got off the airplane at Green Ramp. So Green Ramp's where they come back from overseas. So as they were flying in, I was standing there all dressed up. I had my tall legs on, so I was finally six foot. <coughs> Sorry. And um, this is a picture of actually the reenact from my documentary, and then the other one is a picture of me actually hug hugging my medic that saved my life. So I had my medic get off the plane, I was saluting him, and we just had a big embrace because that's the guy that worked on me and made sure I stayed alive for my family. So I click it. Does anybody here like Chevys? Yeah. That's too bad. Is anybody a Dodge fan? Even worse. Toyota? Get out. Ford, that's it. Ford. Anyway. All right, all right. So, so I drive a Ford, all right, from Michigan, where they're made, or the companies, the companies there, I guess. They're made somewhere else. But I drive a Ford. This is my Ford truck. I also drive a van. In case you guys see me drive away, I drove my van today, so don't think I'm a liar. I have both. But my van's set up pretty neat. So the picture's over there. I have a little bump, bump switch by the end on my shoe. And I hit that with my thigh, and when I press it, it beeps once in its left turn signal. Twice is right turn, and goes up from uh, horn to dimmer switch to cruise control. You guys don't even know how to drive yet. What am I telling you for? No, I'm kidding. You guys get the, get the premise. And then on the uh, other picture on the bottom, there's a little joystick that goes right here on my arm. And I pull back, and that's my, that's my gas. Like, that's my gas pedal. I push forward, and that's my brake. So I just, I mean, I just rev it up and rip around my van, you know, drifting. You guys know what drifting is? I do it all the time. All the time. Now my truck's different. My truck actually, I lock my legs at a 25 degree angle and I'm able to press the gas and press the brake just like everybody else would. I have a turbo diesel and it's chipped. So if anybody wants to race me, bring out your bikes. You know what I'm saying? Because you guys can't drive in your face. Click it. 
So as you can see, I just tool, you know, just hang out. There's my wife, a kid, me and my dog on the property. No big thing. <coughs> it froze again. All right. We got glitches in this. But anyway, so okay, that was another long-term goal was that. Now another long-term goal I had set was that I wanted to have a foundation. Does anybody here like mountain biking? All right, awesome. Has anybody ever gone mountain biking down an actual mountain? All right, cool. So this picture right here is me on a four-wheel bike. The brakes are between my thighs, so I gotta squeeze my legs together to brake. And I was on top of a 9,000-foot mountain in Mount Crested Butte, Colorado, learning how to actually mountain bike. But that's pretty cool. And after that experience, and snowboarding and things like that, I thought, you know what, let me start something in Maine where I live. Let me start something in this great state to help give back to veterans that are in the same situation that I'm in. So the Travis Mills Foundation was born. Go ahead and click it. Okay, so these are some of my friends. As you can tell, they're missing legs and limbs. Um, and I bring them up to Maine in this facility, the Elizabeth Arden Estate in Mount Vernon, Rome area. And what we do is we uh, help them rehabilitate. We help them do, learn how to kayak, canoe, boat, swim, fish, tube. Know there's a network out there of people. Um, like them, they don't have to be alone in their situation. Uh, this is what it looks like. Who wants to go to my camp? It's really nice. It's really nice. No, it's all right. All right, it's under massive, massive renovations right now. And 2017 will be up and running, and then we'll need volunteers. And you guys can all jump on a school bus and come up and help me with the property and volunteer. Is that what you raise your hand for? You want to volunteer? All right, awesome, nice. Yeah, you do. You guys will love it. And check this out. We're going to take questions here in a little bit, so I hope you guys are thinking of some really good questions for me. I hope so. All right, healthcare technology. Go ahead and click it, Craig. All right, like I mentioned with the legs. How the legs work, you start out on short legs, like you see in the left picture. And then you go from there to tall legs that don't bend, and then you go to the X3s. I'm wearing X3s right now. They're waterproof. They also have a Bluetooth remote that clicks them into driving mode. They have hydraulic brakes inside of them and they help me walk. That's the most important thing. They make over 300 adjustments per second whenever I move my body so that they can help me stand upright. And um, I'm thankful to have them. I need a volunteer. Volunteer, volunteer, somebody. It's just, have a good day, see you later. Sorry, your hand went up quicker, right here in the red. Are you nervous? Are you a singer? Hop on up, we're gonna sing. Stand right here, what's your name? Katie, give Katie a round of applause. All right, are you ready? Sure. Those hurt. Those hurt. I had braces. You ever had a power chain before? Oh, they're the worst. Don't, if, you're, if your orthodontist is like, hey, you want a power chain? Just say no. You ever get glow on dark ones? Ask for them. They're awesome. Oh, hey, back to this. Okay. So I had braces. I just, you know, whatever. All right, so how this hand works. Go ahead and click it, Craig. We're going to watch this. So this hand right here I have on is called a grifer. It's got uh, so much pressure it'll actually break bones in people's hands. So don't shake my hand if I have that on because I'll get you. Um, I can get away with anything because I have no fingerprints. Just remember that. Are you nervous? You should be. Okay. No. All right, check it out. So how this works, you ever rode a dirt bike before or a motorcycle or a moped? All right, put your hands out like this. All right, pretend you're riding a motorcycle right now. Nice, grabbing the handlebars. Wind's in your hair, right? You get, out of, get out of your face. Okay, now, how you rev the engine, I want you to put your fist, tip, uh, tip your hand back towards the ceiling. Tip the hand back towards, just a hand. Nice, nailing it, we're gonna call it the gas. Now there's a muscle on your arm right here, everybody can feel that muscle. All right, put it back, now flex it up slow. Okay, so you flex it up slow, it opens. Up fast, put it back down, flex it up fast. You know what, this isn't working because I need to hear the sound, they don't know what you're doing. So this is, we're going to call it a motorcycle, so I need to hear vroom slow and vroom fast, but I want them to hear it. So flex it up slow. Vroom. A <laughs> little, little bit louder. Vroom. Nailed it. So when she flexes her hand slow, it opens. All right, flex it up fast. Vroom. No, no, like, like really get on it, hammer on it. Just vroom. Vroom. Pretty. <laughs> get louder. Get excited. Get excited about this. You're trying. All right, and when I flex the muscle fast, it rotates to the left. Now, remember the other motion we did? Down. We're gonna call it the break, okay? So, or, you ready? Stop slow, stop slow. 
They can't hear you. Do it loud, quiet. Do it loud, quiet. Loud, quiet. Loud, quiet. Do it. All right, so when you flex this muscle down here, when you flex it slow, it closes and down fast, rotates. Then the other cool thing, somebody at Walter Reed decided was that we needed voice activated technology in this. Sounds great, right? So you're going to help me with this. Watch this. All right, blue lights on, right? Yeah, say yes. yes. Tell the crowd. Yes. All right, so now you're like, open. What? Close. Are you kidding me right now? I mean, are you kidding me right now? All right, turn. It only turns one way. Stop. Oh, it's going to test me, isn't it? Stop. Thank you. You can put your arms down. You're not on the motorcycle anymore. Okay. Do you want to try? Sure. Give it an open. Open. Oh. Stop. All right, now try open. Open. I just oh, said it. Oh, okay. I said it. Try it. Try it. Close. Open. No, it's already open. Close. All right, so it's actually baritone soprano bass, so you got to have a little more raspy of a voice. Just growl at it. Close. Louder, like close. Close. Get loud. Close. Close. No, growl, like. Grr. One more time. I want everything you have right now. Close. Oh, try open. Open. No, growl, like louder. Like, open. Open. Like, no, like deeper. Deep. <laughs> You, I, all right, so I'm lying completely. It's not voice activated. Um, no, it's not. I'm just messing with you. Thanks for playing. You got a bracelet? We'll get you a bracelet. All right, give it a round of applause. Yeah. That was a complete lie. That's not, there's no voice activated technology whatsoever. Um, the blue lights were just my battery power, fully charged. You can detest, attest to. And the other one's an on off switch. <laughs> oh, what a jerk. I know. <laughs> Go ahead and click it. Good. All right, so some cool things we will do. I go skydiving. It's not that cool, it's just gravity. All you gotta do is fall. You guys probably have heard about gravity, I imagine. About an apple from a tree. Man named Isaac, last name Newton. Uh, this is me driving a van. I'm just, I'm actually singing Watch Me Whip and Watch Me Nay Nay, you know, so. Watch me whip, watch me nay nay. <laughs> How we do? Sorry. <laughs> I got in it right there, I'm sorry. Is anybody snowboard? Nice. Does anybody ski? Get out of snowboarder's way. I'm just kidding. Uh, I still work out as I showed you guys, and then this. Real quick. Hey, oh, come back up here real quick. I got to show you something. Come here. We got to show him something. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. All right, grab my arm. Grab my hand. hand? Now twist it. Like, twist. Come on. Be forceful. Twist it. Twist it. Hold it. Yeah. Go sit down. Go sit down. Go sit down. All right. Well, give my hand back. <laughs> push it on, kind of hard. Push it, twist it. Come oh, on, don't push me over. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. All right. All right, so I think we have audio, right? We ask the IT gentleman. We have audio. All right, cool. Go ahead. This is. All right, check this out. This is the trailer of my documentary. I'll explain it. Oh, never mind. I was way off. This is perspective. I thought it was a trailer coming up. That's what Craig told me. That's a lie. I want to throw someone under the bus. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let me be honest with you. Okay, I know you guys are young, and I and I get that you guys are in in middle school here and doing really great things and um, maybe some of this stuff doesn't apply to you like how important my, my wife and my kid are to me. Um, but I want to tell you how I keep going, how I keep pushing forward. What motivates me to get up every day and have a good day and be smiling. Um, this is where I get serious. On the picture on the left here, that's Francis Gene Phillips IV. He went by Frankie though. He was Frankie Phillips. He was a great friend of mine. Uh, two deployments together. I knew his wife and his kid well. And he went overseas a third time after I was uh, already injured, and he was in a Humvee, and he hit a roadside bomb. 
He didn't make it home. The whole truck, everybody in the truck didn't make it home. So he has a wife that will never get to see him again, a daughter that won't grow up with him, and a mom and a you know, dad that don't get to see him for Christmas and holidays. So if you think about it, I'm a lucky guy. Uh, I almost lost my life and I almost sacrificed everything, but I didn't. So when everybody sees my situation, they think, whoa, how horrible would that be? I just think about Frankie and think about other friends I've lost. This other guy right here, Brandon Goodine, he joined at 17. He wanted to do something different, um, so he graduated and got his, uh, you know, emancipation, whatever. He graduated and he went to the military at 17. He had a wife and a kid um, when he was on this deployment, and he didn't make it home either. So if you guys wonder how I keep going forward and keep pushing, I mean, I know the actual cost of, of what could have happened, and I just am so thankful to be here hanging out with you today and um, enjoying your company because it truly is a, a gift that I'm still alive. Click it for me. The next thing is I went to Coronado, California, and I got to meet six, there's only four on stage, but six of the nine doctors that worked on me. There was nine doctors and seven nurses. It was 14 hours of surgery, and there was two nurses for nine hours that just pumped that little bag into my, like the bag of air into my lungs so I can keep, uh, keep breathing. Um, I got to meet them. They were really worried when they knew they were going to meet me. They thought I was going to be mad, like mad or angry at them and be upset about the situation I was in and think that I was gonna blame them for keeping me alive. And that was actually nowhere near the truth. I broke down and I cried, which I don't do. And I thanked them for what they did. And my mom was there, she's the one hugging me in the picture and my wife and my kid. And we all said, thank you for your hard work. And I definitely am not gonna waste your hard work on um, giving up on myself. So I keep pushing forward, I keep moving and, I, and I'm thankful for the, the ability to still have the, the life that I do. Go ahead and click it. All right, now the documentary. So there's a documentary on iTunes out on me, and I'll show you guys the trailer quick, and then we'll come back for a little bit more. Click it. Find me a little loud. Oh, it's no audio. Uh-oh. Everybody look at him again. Everybody stare. Put the pressure on. Put the pressure on. All right, well, we'll come back to it. We'll come back. So I got a book out right now. Maybe some of you know, maybe you don't know. It is a New York Times bestseller. I'm um, very thankful for that. Where did that go? And um, it just kind of covers my whole, entire, my, my whole story. It tells everything. I mean, I held nothing back. It tells me about me getting detention for farting in class when I was a kid. I did. I got put down detention for passing wind in class. It was an excessive amount, so... You've been there, right? Oh, no. No? No, okay, all right. No. Anyway, so the book's out. This has got real quiet and awkward. Go ahead and click it, Craig. It's the same thing. All right, so everybody can find me at travismills.org. Anybody can email us. It goes to myself, goes to Craig, my lawyer in Texas, which he probably won't respond, and it goes to my executive director of my foundation, Miss Christine Torriello over there, go ahead and raise your hand. This is the lady that runs day-to-day -day operations at my foundation. And, um, and everything about the foundation, if you guys want to hop on a bus, come up and volunteer and help out, we definitely appreciate it. But now, I'm going to pick your guys' brain. Who has a question for me? Nothing offends me, nothing bothers me, right here. Good question. I actually have seven arms for this side, nine for this side. I have, uh, I think, six different sets of legs, or six legs? Six different legs. But my body, because of what happened to me, when you have your heart beat, it pushes your blood to your fingers and toes. Oh, he asked if I, why I don't wear my prosthetic if I don't have one. So um, the, the, the reason is when your body pushes your heart to your, your blood, um, uh, from your, to your fingers and toes from your heart and it comes back, it comes back cooled down. Mine doesn't cool down anymore. Uh, as, as easily. So I'm always hot. I'm always sweating. Um, so this arm gets real sweaty and it falls off because it's so small. So I have them. I use them for, you know, downhill mountain biking or snowboarding. Activity sports, but I don't use them on an everyday basis. But I have a bunch of them. You 
You know, I actually, I didn't feel it. Uh, she asked if it hurt when I got blown up. I didn't actually feel it. I could see the aftermath. I could see the right arm, my right leg. I could see, you know, what was going on, but nothing, it didn't really hurt. The only thing that hurt is uh, they had to give me an IV. Has anybody here ever had an IV? All right, so you know about the needle they put, they stick it in your vein. Well, they had to give me an IV, but they had to do it in my sternum, like right here. And that needle is about that big. <laughs> and they had to like jam it in there. And that's the only time I was like, oh, doc, that hurts. But um, besides that, I was very fortunate. I didn't, I didn't feel any pain, and it, it worked out really well for me. In the back with an awesome jacket. What's up? Uh, when did you enlist? Huh? When did you enlist? Uh, I was 18 years old, and I enlisted right out of college. I played a little college football, and then I enlisted at 18. And then um, I was going to do 20 years. I mean, I loved it. I re-enlisted, um, I think, day after Christmas, or Christmas Day, I think. And I was overseas on um, 2009, Christmas Day, I enlisted again. Right there with the hand up in the plant. Yes, man. Or right in the pink first. Yeah, I didn't see your hand. Well, yeah, we'll go both of you, but rock, paper, scissors. All right, all right, we'll do the front person first, and we'll go. No, no, it's, it's not that hard to shower. No, she asked me, it's hard for me to shower. No, turn the water on, you know, use soap. Most days. What's up? Yeah. What's that now? Oh, the foundation is not done yet, so we have that goal still being met. Um, you can always improve every day on walking. My next thing is I want to do a backflip. So that's a joke. I actually can do a backflip on the trampoline. I'm not even kidding. Check out TravisMills.org. Right here on the red shirt underneath the black. Yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah, nailed it. Why do I have to wear shoes? Because I want to? I mean, seems pretty simple. Because I enjoy it. I don't know. That's what the therapist did. All right. Here we go on the white turtleneck, sir. I don't feel pain, uh, fortunately. I mean, I get sore. I just did a, my, my shoulders and my back are real sore. I just worked out yesterday at the CrossFit gym. I got to go again tonight. But um, I don't really have pain, which is very fortunate. Because a lot of guys have, like, phantom limb pain, and it hurts them. But... Uh, I don't, I don't have that, so that's pretty cool. I'm, I'm very thankful for that. We may want to enlist in the Army. Uh, I wanted to enlist in the Army because I wanted to try something new. I was in debt, which, I mean, I had bills to pay, and I wanted to be able to pay them. I also had a girlfriend that had another boyfriend, so I just was like, oh, well, I didn't know about him. So she didn't love me anymore. Oh, all right, we're going to watch the trailer quick, and then we'll get back to your questions. All right, cool. We had a call that there was an IED threat in the area. We had to go check it out and see if there was one. You know, we went out there as normal. It was supposed to be a pretty quick mission. You know, just a couple hours in the village right next to our, our strong point and back. We were setting a gun in place. Fessy went first, swept the bank, went uh, up and down, cleared it. He got about 20 feet away from me. You know, I said, OK. I took my bag off and set it down. And when I set it down, Honestly, the first thing that kicked into my mind was, this is not real. This is fake. I remember, actually, while we were working on him, one of the things he said was, I just want to be able to hold my little girl again. Do you love your daddy? Tell him I'm getting out of here in 10 months. He kept saying, why? You know, what's your big rush? I said, hey, Doc, look behind you. I had pictures of me and my wife and my daughter. I have a family. Like, I, I live in a hospital bed. Get me out of here. Yeah, him with Chloe, you know, she doesn't care that her dad doesn't have arms and legs. It's her dad. So, that's all she knows. That's all she knows of him. So, to her, nothing was lost. The way I see it. Seeing him stand up for the first time, I could feel so much joy from him. That was like a turning point for us. I don't understand how he does it. 
I think he's meant to lead and help people. You know, he faces obstacles and he doesn't let anything stop him. I believe God's got a plan for all of us. And after seeing Travis in action, the word bravery has more meaning to me now than it ever has. So that's the documentary. All right, so that actually is GI Film Festival. Uh, you know, we won first place and first prize for the best show, so it's good. It's on iTunes. Everybody can check anything out on me at travismills.org. But let's get back to a few more. Uh, and as long as you're gonna let me take questions there, uh, as long as we're good, yeah. All right, um, right here in the red shirt or maroon, maroon. Sorry. I don't. No, I had a special, uh, special um, coma that reset all my nerve endings. I think he asked if I ever feel phantom limb pain, and the question is no, because I had a special coma that reset my nerve endings. I think that were my leg, my arms and legs end is where they actually end. Instead, I try to find your feet, and that's what comes from uh, phantom limb pain. Comes from the nerves trying to find the feet and the hands still, and it feels like it's still there. All right, we're gonna go right here in the or uh, green shirt. In that video, uh, 25. Right? Yeah, because it's September. Right? We did that. Yeah, 25. So it's, that's like six months after my explosion. Uh, with the red hair. In basketball, I was power forward and small, like small forward. I could uh, dribble between my legs and shoot, as well as I was really tall, so I could dunk it. For some reason I did basketball instead of wrestling is I could dunk. That's it. Yeah. What's up? How what? How tall was I? Oh, how could I? Oh, how can I call somebody? Um, I usually have a watch on that does it for me. I have the iPhone watch, or I have my my cell phone, like everybody else. Hey Siri, call my beautiful wife. That's what I named my wife on my phone because it's true and it makes me look good. <laughs> the camo shirt. She is four, going on 13, maybe even 17. All right, over here in the plaid. Have they been motivated? That's the only motivation, really. They're the reason I decided, like, okay, well, this can be done. Let's get better and keep moving. All right, we're going to go. What? All right, hold on. Ladies and gentlemen, real quick. I just got the word that it can only be one more question, so this better be a good question. It better be the best. I want the most eager person that's raising their hand. Boy, everybody's pointing to the kid in the back in the red shirt. I'll take two more. I'll do one in the back. What's up? Football. That doesn't count as a question. It's football, obviously. Right there, raising your hand with a black undershirt on. No, you had the right in front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then right behind, yeah. What's up? Yeah. Nope. Nope. That one's not good either. Right behind. Yeah. No, no, no. Right behind in the red sweatshirt, or red shirt. Yeah, right. Yeah. Famous reaction, great question to end on. They were upset. Moving on. No, uh, no. I mean, they, they took it pretty hard, obviously. I felt bad for them, worse, worse for them than myself, because they had to sit and wait, and I knew what I was going through. But, uh, you know, we all came together. My dad actually, uh, one more great story before I got a roll. Um, my dad actually was so nervous, he, like, kind of quit drinking water and got so dehydrated that he had to go to emergency surgery because he almost died of diverticulitis. So he was seven rooms down from me. He used to walk with his IV pole down to my room and back at the hospital. This is not that funny. Uh, that kind of is. He's good. He's living. But that's, I think that's it. So I'm going to turn it back over to the principal because she's in charge and I'm not. <laughs> Truly 
truly inspiring. Uh, thank you, uh, Sergeant Travis Mills. On behalf of all my students and staff, uh, we'd like to uh, give you a donation of $500 to your foundation that the students and staff here raised over two days at school. So, wow, thank big, you guys so much. Big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I can't really grab that right now. Am I supposed to? I can't grab that right now. Where's... So, have everybody have a seat. So again, I ask you, when you wake up tomorrow morning and you're laying there and you're thinking, it's a new day. It's a day that you get to be a part of. What can you do to make a positive impact on yourself and somebody else? True resiliency, courage, motivation, compassion. This guy right here, true American hero. And I want to thank him personally for taking the time to come and speak to my school. Jellyfish.